Hello everybody and welcome to another Vintage Amplifier uh, tour and service. Uh, today we're, we have uh, a Gibson GA15RVT, uh, also known as the Explorer amplifier. This example is from 1966. As you can see it has the later cab style with the uh, sort of trapezoidal top um, that goes in on the front and as well as the back. Um, this one, uh, this later style uh, also has uh, a black sort of uh, pleather um, covering. Uh, this style of handle uh, which also looks like, like it has the same pleather covering. Um, and uh, front facing controls uh, definitely different than the uh, previous Crestline series and certainly different than anything they had from the 50s as far as the uh, style of the cabinet. Uh, it also kind of has this silver sparkle grill um, and uh, silver logo that's actually mounted on a uh, piece of black plastic. Um, if we turn the amp around, uh, we see the back here we have a 1.5 amp fuse and I've already checked that and it's correct. Uh, there's a speaker plug underneath. There's also an external speaker jack for uh, if you want to run a separate cab as well. Uh, in addition to the internal one, uh, there, the foot switch, uh, which is included with this one, has uh, tremolo and reverb. Uh, this one, the customer uh, essentially just uh, wants me to look it over, so we're going to take a look and see what it needs. And uh, okay, from the there. bench today we have a nineteen, about a nineteen sixty six um, Gibson GA fifteen RVT. Uh, the GA15 RVT is otherwise known as the Explorer, um, at least by this time it was. Uh, the earlier Explorer was a different model number altogether. Uh, Gibson was kind of like that uh, over the years. They would change model numbers um, and model names seemingly at random. Um, this one is in, from what I can tell, pretty much 100% original condition. Uh, on the inside, um, all of the the electrolytic power caps are original. Um, everything over here on this rail is, or on this terminal strip, is original. All these components look to me to be original. Um, you know, by this time, you'll see another video uh, in my recent uh, past that was a. Um, another Gibson from about this same time and uh, they were using these here, let me get a pointer here they were using these uh, a couple of different capacitors they were using these brown ones and these orange ones uh, and I think they were kind of in a transitional period at this time and they probably had some of these left in certain values and uh, they were bringing in these um, but at any rate we have a couple different types of cap here um, these all look original though. Uh, looks like, let's see, actually we have the 33rd week of 1965 on that cap. Uh, this one is the 10th week of 1966. So obviously it couldn't have been made any earlier than that. Uh, here we have a, a 606 power transformer, 1966, fourth week. Uh, I could flip this over and look at the other transformers as well, but I'm pretty confident they're all going to be somewhere in the 1966 region. Uh, the first thing I've done so far is uh, clean everything. I've sprayed out all the pots. Um, they're now pretty much all clean. Um, I've sprayed out uh, all of and cleaned all of the jacks, uh, including the speaker jacks. Um, let's see, what else? Um, oh, also the... Uh, uh, the power switch, um, I needed to, to uh, spread the legs on the, um, the potentiometer so that they would fit this um, knob a little better. Uh, these are just little things I've done so far. Um, one of the things that is not original to this amp is the speaker, which is a Fender labeled, uh, looks like probably an Eminence 10 inch speaker. Um, the Explorer, the GA15 RVT uh, from this time frame uh, was a 10 inch with two EL84 output tubes. 
Uh, everything actually on this appears to work um, exactly as it should. The only thing I found that really didn't work as it was supposed to was the uh, foot switch for the reverb. Um, and uh, I've actually gotten that to work now. Um, just popping the back off of this, there was one wire that was loose in here, so I've already already fixed that, so it works now as it should. Um, so that turns the reverb on and off. The tremolo works like it should. I don't know if you can hear that or not. Let's let's hit the guitar. Hit, hit a guitar note. So that's the tremolo and everything working as it should. I can already tell this thing would get very loud if I were to crank it right now. Um, I think the only thing I really need to do, this still has the two prong cord. Um, so I'll come in here and put a put a three prong cord in, uh, take out the death cap, um, and replace these electrolytics. And probably I'm going to keep the electrolytics in this physical location, uh, but I will mount, mount them on a couple of terminal strips. Um, so yeah, let's let's do that, and then uh, then we'll come back to it. Okay, before we really go any further, um, you may recall from some of my previous videos uh, how much I kind of talk about this um, tone sucking network in Gibson amps, um, which consists in this case there looks like there was a couple on this um, this amp schematic. Uh, again, this is the uh, schematic for the GA15 RVT. Um, it looks like they have one of those networks here. Uh, before are going into the treble uh, and uh, before the loudness setting and then they have another one coming out of the loudness so you have uh, in the schematic at least you have one not one but two of those uh, before or in between gain stages um, this one uh, does not exist at all in the amp that we have uh, and this one only exists partially this 500p uh, picofarad cap is actually bypass uh, bypassing here and going to the leg of the treble um, and there is a 220k coming out of the bass leg into the into the loudness uh, but this uh, component doesn't appear to be there and neither does this one um, so uh, and also uh, this one is just a simple um, grid stopping resistor um, into the next stage and none of this exists as well so I just wanted to point that out that uh, this amp does say that it's supposed to have a couple of those uh, what I lovingly refer to as tone sucking networks uh, but they do not actually exist in the amp and again that's kind of par for the course for Gibson uh, they almost are never exact um, to what's on the the schematic another example is uh, there's actually a, a cap before the uh, the first grid the first tubes grid um, here as well so uh, that's another difference but we do have everything fully serviced here and uh, we have all of our new caps and I actually just put them over here on this uh, terminal strip uh, as opposed to um, actually drilling a hole here and um, going through all the effort and it probably would have taken a lot more time to put two more terminal strips here and move everything over here. And actually, it may have, um, uh, the, the further away you can get everything from signal uh, wires that are all mostly over here, the better off we're going to be as far as the caps go anyway. So I just decided to put those over here. Um, also, uh, installed the three prong cord. We have the ground going here. Um, removed the death cap, which was over here. Uh, so everything is pretty much ready to go. I have uh, cleaned all of the pots, cleaned all of the uh, jacks, including the speaker jacks. Um, include uh, also uh, cleaned all of the sockets. Um, everything sounds great. There was one uh, broken wire on the foot switch uh, for the reverb, and there, and that wasn't working. So um, resoldered that wire, and now that switch does work. So uh, this thing's ready to be buttoned up and tried out. Okay, this thing's been on and burning in for a little while, and I think we're about ready for a play test. We'll just take a look at uh, the front panel here. We see we have three inputs, uh, loudness, treble, bass, reverb, and tremolo with uh, depth and frequency. Uh, we have a power switch with two on positions for uh, reverse polarity, which 
doesn't matter anymore since we put a three prong cord on. Um, the <clears throat> logo was cracked in the usual place right here on the end. Um, so I went ahead and just put a little bit of super glue there to glue that back together. Um, while I have it, might as well try to make it as perfect as I can. Um, this thing was 100% original uh, when I got it. You know, again, we had to replace that power cord. Well, I say 100% original. Actually, the only thing that was not original was that uh, speaker right there. Uh, that's a Fender labeled uh, Eminence speaker made right here in good old Kentucky. Um, yeah, all the RCA tubes apparently were still there. The 6 EU7s, uh, 112 AU7, and the uh, EL84 output tubes, or 6BQ5s are the RCA numbers. Uh, but yeah, we're ready to uh, test this thing out. A couple more things before we go further. Uh, when I got this amp um, from the customer, it, uh, it had a wire that had come loose on the reverb switch inside the uh, switch, the, the foot switch here. And, uh, and that was probably due to the, this wire being pulled and pushed uh, back and forth. Um, you know, that, that wire is just basically going into the housing and there's nothing there uh, stock. So I've added um, a couple zip ties, one on the outside and then there's one on the inside as well. Uh, and that's just keeping that cord from pulling back and forth and uh, weakening the uh, wire connections there. I mean, it's still able to twist around, so you don't really want to twist on it too much. Um, but at least this will help. That's something you can do on your uh, your Gibson foot switches uh, to prevent them from uh, those connections from coming loose on you. Um, another thing uh, I always want, like to do with these uh, later model Gibsons, they don't have any um, retainers for the uh, for the power cord. So I've added I've added a power cord retainer. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see it or not, but uh, there's a power cord retainer in there as well. And that just keeps you from pulling your pulling your power cord if somebody trips on the thing and ripping it out on the inside of the amp. Um, so yeah, those are a couple of the little changes that uh, uh, that actually you can make on yours without even having to really open up the amp. Um, get you a little uh, cord retainer and put one here, and and then also get a couple zip ties and uh, and do this with your foot switch as well. Okay, uh, here we're ready to uh, test this thing out um, in, the, in the spirit of never, never just uh, doing a repair or doing something like this and uh, sending it on its way without actually doing a play test. Uh, we're going to check it out with a, uh, with a Fender American Standard Strat. Um, right now the volume is on about 8. Uh, treble is also on about 8. The bass is on about 10. Uh, now one thing about these uh, later 60s Gibson amps, uh, if you cut the bass or treble at all down from 10, uh, you're also seriously cutting um, signal as well. Uh, so you're, you're actually, your volume overall uh, will drop uh, because you're sending a lot of the signal to, to ground in various places there on the tone stack. So it's really best to crank the bass uh, all the way up to 10 and the treble at least at least up to seven or so um, to push through as much signal as you can. And then, you know, of course, you've always got your guitar and your, your technique to try to uh, make up for uh, your EQs. So um, that's, that's one thing to keep in mind with these old Gibson amps. Uh, another thing is, uh, you'll probably notice here in a bit, um, this logo actually rattles a little bit. That's because there's a little bit of space between the actual uh, writing itself and the, uh, the black portion. Um, and what I'm going to recommend to the customer is he actually uh, unscrew this logo, take it off, and actually put a couple of dabs of epoxy glue or maybe some soup, a couple more dabs of super glue in various places, kind of drip them behind the, uh, uh, you know, the letters there uh, so that it, it won't rattle on you. Uh, it's on certain notes. But otherwise, other than that, this thing sounds freaking amazing, and I think you'll agree. <laughs> Thank you. 
reverb. Very lush reverb, in fact.
1966 uh, Gibson GA15 RVT, otherwise known as uh, the Explorer.